Ah, it's moving day. Um, <laughs> and we're going into town to empty the recycling and also to um, find a proper 2 240 volt plug to test out the UV bulb. It's had issues with the UV filter. Um, it's, the UV bulb isn't actually starting up. I think it's got something to do with the ballast. Um, and whether we're running it on the generator or through the inverter, it's it's not enough it's not enough juice to get it the bulb heated up and, and lit. Um, so the third bulb we've had sent out. Yeah. Yeah, it's but there was a fault. Well, there was a fault with the first one. Um, they sent it a replacement and it wasn't working. Um, now they've sent out a whole new kit, which is really kind of them, that they tested before they sent it um, and it's still not working for us. Yeah. So I um, want to make sure that the ballast can light the bulb and then from there maybe uh, get a bigger ballast. Um, to light our bulb, so get a 30 watt ballast for our 25 watt bulb, and hopefully that might work. Um, we installed a bigger pump yesterday, that was really good. We got decent flow rates for a while, um, but the ceramic filter just clogs up really One quickly. It picks up all the silt and it just gets blocked. Um, our flow rate's been dropping quite quickly and all the way to zero, so just literally nothing happening within sort of a matter of minutes. Yeah. So we're not really getting anything in until we can store this new pump and it increase the pressure behind all in, isn't it? Yeah. So it's good having the new pump, but um, we really need the UV filter to work as well so that we don't have to rely on the ceramic. Um, we yeah. can get some decent flow rates. So we're getting sort of five litres a minute. At best. At best, like. with, with the new pump. But we're really, we were hoping for something like 22 or something. Yeah, well, the, the UV filter's rated at 22 litres a minute, yeah. and this new pump should be able to do that if it doesn't have to push it through the ceramic. Yeah, we have nearly 3,000 litres that we can hold, so it's a long time sitting around. We've got 3,500 litres. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we need to sort that out. And we need to sort the batteries out. Um, <laughs> they were down to 3% this morning. Yeah. It's, it's quite cold, but they don't really like that. Um, but we. We need to change them, I think, and probably get some more solar panels to help with the charging of it. Yeah. It's just not, not very efficient running the generator for hours every day just to charge the batteries. That's a lot of diesel we're going through. Yeah, and a lot of wear and tear on the generator, and just not good practice, really. Also, just really quick update, we're um, not sick because of the water. <laughs> Turns out we think we had norovirus. Um, I bought it home from work. Thanks a lot. Um, luckily little baby Ollie didn't get it, so that was quite a relief. But thank you to everyone who sent messages of wishing us well and hoping us yeah. that we got better soon. That was really lovely. Um, yeah, thank you. But uh, yeah, it turns out it's not, it wasn't the water. We were quite certain of that. Otherwise we thought we would have been sick at the same time. Ollie certainly would have got it. Um, even though we were really careful, we used boiled water. We got bottled water ever since. I've been drinking the water ever since and I'm fine. Yeah. This is why we need new batteries. Especially at 0% and almost under 12 volts. Oh, hi Jerry. Thanks for joining us. I've got to get the stakes out of the ground before he's got to get back on the boat and get the plank in. We can't really get too far away from the bank or he can't get back on the boat. So. Experiment. Bow lines off. Stern lines off. Stakes are on board. It's our own private drawbridge. Ah, it's like we live on a castle. So the plan was if it all went wrong, I was going to have to drive the bow into the bank so that Corey could literally launch himself back onto the boat. Um, I'm, I really wish we had got that version actually now because that would have been much more exciting for all of us. But uh, this is much less stressful and much more smooth. So 
Hooray! Well done. Here we go. Good work, Ollie. Yeah! <laughs> True. Should we go? Off to Hartford. We tested the UV filter at a cafe in Hartford and it still didn't work so we're filling the tanks at a water point. We've come all the way into Hartford and we're going to moor right in the centre of town which will be lovely for a bit but uh yeah not being able to fill our tanks as fast as we'd like so we just really need, we just need some water so we're going to fill them up um, and then keep trying to pursue the UV. Yeah, the full tanks. This is the end of the lee navigation. So we're literally just turning the boat around to take our flagpole off underneath that bridge over there just to get through to turn around. I think we would have struggled to turn around that bit. Yeah. Probably one of the lowest bridges, don't you reckon? Yeah, right. Railway yeah. bridges, maybe. Yeah. A little bit lower. Yeah. Not my much. <laughs> what are you doing down there, Ollie? <laughs> yeah. So just moored out the front of these big allotments in Hartford. So we've got a Cabola uh, boiler um, on our boat. It's one of the the older, I don't think they make them anymore, but they're a gravity fed system so there's there's absolutely no moving parts which is which is pretty amazing so it doesn't need any any kind of power supply to, to run them. Some of the newer ones need um, a, a diesel pump to push the, the fuel through. So the way it works is that the level of diesel in one of our tanks um, in the stern is higher than the level of of this regulator here and you heat the pot up to start with and then let the diesel start dripping in and as soon as the diesel drips in it's ignited and heats the pipes that are filled with the, the water that go to We've got a, a coil going into our chlorifier to, to heat our water and then the other pipes going to the radiators. And this is the lowest part of, of the central heating system, so that whole system works by convection as well. So we don't need to have any kind of uh, pump to pump the, um, or the liquid through the, the central heating system, which is good because they, even when you put them on the low pressure, low temperature side, I haven't heard great things about them. They, they need replacing quite often. So. Ours doesn't need any of that, no no moving parts, no electrical supply, not much to go wrong. Except that after probably nearly six months worth of use, it needs a good clean out. So that's my job now. <laughs> and what a dirty job it is. Yeah. <laughs> but it does run much more efficiently once it's cleaned out, doesn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. That yeah. makes a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't take long, it's it's probably about half an hour or so. Yeah. Um, to do it. Yeah. But I'll do it outside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's the after shot. Yeah. Just clean the bottom. It's yeah, it's not hundred percent clean, but it's it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It'll make a make a massive difference. So now I just need to I'll clean out the inside a little bit, put it all back together and light it up. Hmm. Doing all this by feel. <laughs> the one design fault I think with this setup is that I would have moved this to the side so that it allows that to come in and out easier. As it is, I need to take the regulator not off, but out of position every time. I'm... But if that was set up on the side, you wouldn't have to ever touch it. And it's it's kind of important in that every time you adjust or every time I undo this, I need to reset it to get it pretty much level and to be at the same level every time. 
um, because it's gravity fed, the higher that is, the, the lower pressure the diesel will come through with, or the lower flow rate. And the lower it is, then the higher flow rate will get. Um, doesn't really make much difference. You can, you can control it with the knob. Um, because the, the level of diesel in the diesel tank will also affect that flow rate, so you need to adjust it. But you, you get used to it, but every time you change it slightly, you need to get used to it again. That's just a, a learning curve that you probably don't need to go through every time. Mm. I only do this six months, I'll do it now, and then that'll get us through the end of the winter, and then I'll do it again just before we turn it on again. So the way this uh, works is the the bowl needs to get really hot, the diesel drops onto it, and as soon as it hits hits that hot surface, it ignites and then heats up and you get a nice little flame. Um, <laughs> to help it do that, I use a blowtorch to, to heat the bowl a little bit first. Put a little bit of white spirit in there, light that, and then start the diesel going in. If you, put, if you have too much diesel sitting in the bottom of the bowl, it doesn't all ignite, um, and it, yeah, it just burns really messily. I know from experience. <laughs> so if we preheat that, and just a cap full of white spirit. You don't want to preheat it too much, otherwise when you pour this in, it'll blow up in your face. Awesome. It won't take much to light that. There we mm. go. So the white spirit sort of burns off, and then we'll start the the diesel going in. Once that flame builds up a bit, we'll close the door and it'll start drawing through the chimney. You're just holding open the fuel line, aren't you? Yeah, there's a temperature controlled fuel line here so that if the flame goes out for whatever reason, it gets too cold, mm. it'll shut off the fuel supply. But initially, we need that open so there's a little button underneath that you press mm. that'll allow the, the fuel to go through until it gets hot enough and then you can let go. So I can hear that that's starting to to light quite well. As soon as I close this, it should start to take off. We want a nice blue tint of a flame, really. Well, it's turning blue now. Yeah. When it's burning yellow, that's um, diesel. It's not being burnt. It's so it's dirty and not very efficient. So we want it pretty much blue the whole time. I think I can let go of that valve now. So the other thing we need to do is just to not touch that for 10-15 minutes, let it settle in. Hmm. If you make too many adjustments too quickly, it, um, it gets upset. So we'll let that do its thing. I'll clean up and then make adjustments later on. So it's not even 10 minutes, I think, since we first lit it. Um, and it's up to over 50 degrees. And we've got we've gone from the blue tent-like flame to this blue ring with the, the yellow bit in the middle, which means that we're not burning all the diesel, we're not burning very efficiently. So I'm going to turn it down, because that's it's too high, really, what we want. So turn it just above the off position. We'll leave that another 10 minutes or so, and we should be up around 70 degrees. It's hard to see where our off position is actually, isn't it? Yeah, all the numbers are sort of worn <laughs> off over here. Yeah. It's nearly 20 years old. Yeah. Still running fine. Yeah, great, great design. Just mm. simple. Mm. As long as we've got diesel in our tanks, we've got, we can have mm. hot water and warm rooms. Yeah, it's which amazing. Is excellent. Yeah. So this is about five minutes on again. We've got just over 60 degrees on the temperature gauge. It'll come up and rest at about 70. And we've got mostly a blue flame happening there. A little bit of yellow burning still. That should settle down. It's also fairly windy outside at the moment, which um, always seems to make it burn a little bit more yellow. Yeah, looking good. Happy with that. Thanks for tuning in to Five Knots Cruising. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps us to get our video out to more viewers. 
We'd love to hear your feedback, questions and ideas, so please drop us a line either on our Instagram page or YouTube channel.